Sean Berry is a chair of the Housing Committee on the London Assembly. She's from the Green Party. And Sean Bailey is a Conservative Party member of the London Assembly. He grew up close to Grenfell in the borough of Kensington and Chelsea. Sean, I'll, I'll begin with you. There has, it would seem, been an epic breakdown of public trust or an epic escalation. Um, do you think this dispute over the death toll is a symptom of that or a cause? Uh, I think it's a symptom. Um, it, is, it has to be said that there was a lack of information about the death toll. Uh, one thing that the police normally do in cases like this is, is put out an estimate of who they think was in the incident and how many people might have survived. And actually those two key pieces of information were not given by the police for a very long time. They would only give that number. So it's really understandable that there would be scepticism about that. Now they have, I challenged the mayor and the police about this last week on the London Assembly. This week for the first time they've put out those two numbers and now we can have a debate. If the police think there were 350 people inside, local people might have different views, at least we can talk about it. Before there was almost, there was nothing to talk about because the police hadn't even given those two numbers out. So I think it's really important that that's clear. Um, in terms of general mistrust though, I mean, I was called down there. I'm a, you know, me and Sean are both London-wide London Assembly members mm. and we represent everybody in London who needs our help and I was asked to come down five days after the fire to, to help try and get some really practical things done, largely for the wider community rather than people who'd been evacuated, people who were still in the area, feeling besieged by the media, wondering where any support for them might be, absolute lack of information about things like road closures, whether or not even the school would be open that day. There was just nothing for people. And actually, I think you saw that today when you went down there. It was volunteers doing everything. There was no information. Uh, and, and it still is. It's still not much better, and I'm still getting messages from people um, every day. I've had to go back three or four more okay. times. Thank you, There's something really broken um, down there, and people are still fending for themselves, and, it, and they're and really it's, burning it's a, out. It's a vacuum, Sean, into mm. which, as, as Sean tells us, volunteers have moved and, and in many ways continue to, to bear the brunt of frontline service that the residents expect to be provided by, by the council. In the continuing absence of the council, it, it took the... Uh, former head eight days to effectively show his face in public before before resigning the continuing absence on the ground of the council how can these people be expected to place their faith in the council that they perceive to have let them down so badly they simply won't it's no surprise to me i was born in here i lived there for a long long time my friends are there my family are there the the reaction of the community doesn't surprise me we've always been a a reactive community we look after our own where the council failed is by not giving it a human face not saying we are responsible for putting this right of understanding the council are, are scared of litigation so you, you understand the skepticism about the numbers you you would be sympathetic to the community for the, doubting what they were being told i i i i, I, I don't buy into the conspiracy theories, but i fully understand why and where that's coming from if you look at how social housing works for instance there's many people london-wide under all kinds of um leadership labor conservative whoever who feel that social housing is something that's inflicted upon them they don't have any say in it they, they're not explained why it works the way it does and those little things build up over years over years over years you look at a community that's been told its muslim members are terrorists its young black men are criminals so of course they hold out to people who don't try to understand them the council um built up quite a good representative um you know they, they had uh, they, they did a lot of work on the ground. It's all been trashed by a very poor response to this. The new council leader has a very steep hill to climb. Well, uh, and, and some of the residents would probably dispute your, 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 your notion that there was much in place to trash. I mean, we're, we're all familiar now with the Grenfell Action Group's blog that warned and predicted... Again, again, the, the, the point is this. You had a community on the ground that largely the council would work with in, in many youth groups, etc. They fund a lot of social groups. But when it comes to social housing, which affects a far larger mm. group of people, in the area, the council, the, the council were too distant. They'd given it to the TMO and they'd moved away. Do you understand how that's happened? Yes, because we are a country who do not punish those who are in high places. And what happens now, when I speak to local people there, they're starting to say things like, I bet you nobody gets in trouble for this. And there's a very serious thing that can be done. The inquiry the terms of that inquiry, how the local people are convened with, and it's very important that someone explains to them exactly what that inquiry means. You have to manage expectation now, because if it doesn't happen now, you will never ever rebuild that trust. It's an important moment. And, and the, inquiry, the, the inquiry will fail without the trust. It will fail before yeah. it's, it's an important yeah. moment for the political establishment to restart 
the process of rebuilding some trust is how yeah. they frame the inquiry. Do you, do you have optimism that that can happen? I um, mean, you're, you're talking about a backdrop that is almost unspeakably bleak. It is, but I mean, the local people are um, organising. They are actually you know, trying their very, very best, but they're not being given resources. And I think we do need a complete reconfiguration of, of democracy down there. But in the well, short why, term, why aren't they being we given? There's can 300 million give them pounds in, the, in their to bank. Actually, do some stuff in Chelsea's bank. There's 300 million. Yeah, so why not million... give it to the voluntary group so they can get on with the stuff that needs doing? Why we've seen three now changes of leadership of who's running the relief organisation, and we're all waiting to get things sorted out. Which actually, if those voluntary organisations and charities had the funds, that's they the key thing. It, is, it. Isn't, isn't just about funds. The government are going to pay. In the that short isn't the money. Yeah. What it's about There's is it's okay, about disaster listen. response. Hand, in, hand on heart, could other council leaders around London and the country say they would have responded any better? Probably not. You need a you need a group of people who are senior enough to make decisions on the ground. Anybody directly affected should not be finding out things in the media. They should be contacted directly and first. And it's not and, happening. And, so. and, and, and without that response, without that team built up who have the money and the, response, and the seniority to deliver, you will always disappoint the local people. Sean Bailey, Sean Berry, many thanks indeed for your time this evening.